Good afternoon, uh, Scratch followers. I hope you're all well. Uh, it's Helen here and welcome to another in our Live from the Living Room series, where we chat to experts in the nail industry and beyond to offer you essential tips, hints, advice, and stuff to just kind of inform, educate, and, and inspire you, because that's what we aim to do best. So today we're very excited to be joined uh, by someone over in LA, her name is Natalie Gordon, and she is a fashion, beauty, and uh, portrait photographer. And she's also no stranger to Scratch Magazine either, because uh, she's been behind two of our front covers. She's worked with Meta Francis, the nail stylist, to produce um, a range of beautiful photos, one of which was featured August 2017, and the other February 2019. So. We all love Instagram, otherwise we wouldn't be here, right? So um, we want to know how to take the perfect nail photo that's going to attract attention and uh, hopefully attract more clients, okay? Agreed? So um, she's gonna be offering lots of hints and tips and we're going to learn a little bit more about Natalie herself as well and what life is like over in LA, hopefully a little bit cooler than it is in the UK today, but we'll see. So if, as always, if you do have any questions, please, Pop them in the comments box below and I'm sure she will love to answer them and we'll try and get them answered throughout the live. So she should be joining us any second now. Hello, Natalie. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> very good, thank you. That sounded very Eurovision of me there. It's like, no, <laughs> How are you? I'm good, I'm well, I'm well. Good, Just, how uh... are things over? I know it's morning time over there. How are things over in LA? Um, It's sunny as always, mm -hmm. um, which is such a joy for me um and I, I know that you guys are experiencing a heat wave over in the UK which is I, I'm actually equally as jealous I'm like <laughs> oh I love London in the summer it's like the best place on earth but yeah um yeah things are still quite quiet we're still kind of on lockdown so right. um there's there's not really much to do but just stay home and like stay safe and everything else so you uh flew back over to LA at the start of the lockdown period is here is that correct yeah so I was in London I had an exhibition um with some of my artwork and um I like what well, people was keeping up with the news and everything and they were like um yeah they're, they're not gonna let people from the UK fly to the US and I was just like well where would I rather be stuck in London or LA so I was just like nah I'll just fly back to LA and <laughs> just be stuck here. But, so tell us a bit about yourself. How um, how do you divide your time between the LA and the UK and kind of what brought you over there and what does your kind of role exist of over there? So I literally, um, I just I just wanted a better lifestyle and not better. I just wanted a different lifestyle in terms of I was always just chasing the sun. So I'd be be working doing the same thing over in London but I would go on like five six holidays a year and I was just like this is ridiculous I'm just wasting money I might as well just try and have a more consistent uh set of values in terms of like uh work and pleasure and everything else so I was like well I don't really have any clients major clients in the UK uh don't really have any clients in LA so let me just go and see what happens mm -hmm. and now I'm able to work back and forth because I've got representation in both places so amazing I guess that's the dream for, for many yeah. people whether they're in the uh, photography <laughs> world or the beauty world it sounds like an, an yeah. amazing dream Sorry, so, there we go. I mean um just to kind of recap um could you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into shooting beauty and also a little bit about your other project which is quite nails related as well yeah, so um, I it was it was really bizarre. So I didn't really know kind of where my career was going to take me. I just knew I wanted to work in the media. I knew I wanted to be doing something creative. So I was like, oh, I want to be a music video director. So I kind of started off in the film world um, and then was working in the music industry for a while, like going to gigs and doing like um, press pictures and, and things like that for record labels. Um, then I uh, got really annoyed with one record label who like promised the world didn't really deliver and then I was just like ah this isn't a consistent enough I can't survive on like such small fees um and then kind of simultaneously at the time my mum kind of got left with a hair salon which is a completely 
different story which um it's quite dramatic but we we worked it out and then so I was helping her with the with the salon and was like you know helping her with reception and trying to understand like how a hair salon works and was just kind of like looking around because I helped her with like the decoration and stuff I'm like these pictures are really like blah and I think they were like just random stock hair pictures and I was just like no it doesn't really fit with what I'm trying to do with the salon and my mum's like it's not your salon I'm like yeah it is <laughs> <laughs> it will be <laughs> yeah it will be um so I was just like all right well like if I can get some models in um do you want to do the hair and like I'll take the pictures and so she loved the idea of that um because it helped her get a bit more creative as, as well and and then from there like I just started like reaching out to makeup artists and stylists and stuff and I was like do you want to just help um help me do these boots and um, whatever and from there people were just like oh my god I love your work it's so good and I was just like yeah you know I didn't really I didn't really think much of it I was just like oh well I just enjoy taking the pictures so um from there people were like can, can I shoot with you and I was just like yeah sure like let's come up with um let's come up with a a, a theme or an idea and then everyone was just like or all, all the makeup artists they still hit me up today like I've got messages in my dm saying i love your work can we work together and i'm just yeah. i'm so flattered because i didn't expect it at all so it's just um it's like it's lovely it's, it's a bit overwhelming but it's lovely at the same time yeah i think that's the importance of, of networking in such creative industries isn't it and yeah. uh yeah having those opportunities and that's what we try to achieve with our annual uh, photographic nail competition um which yeah. is a famous plug here but it, it all relates um it's called the great scratch shootout yeah and every year since scratch's inception back in 2003 we've done this annual um photographic competition so that it allows nail stylists to kind of think outside the box a little bit and team up with photographers makeup artists stylists um and try and get their hand into that experience and make yeah. new contacts and build their portfolio and um it's just so important to kind of branch out a little bit don't you think yeah it, it it definitely is it anything that gets you out of your comfort zone I always say is a really good thing like as as scary as it is like I'm always like pushing myself and trying to get out of what is familiar and what is comfortable um just so I can because I, I also have the fear of being complacent as well I'm like oh if it's just comfortable I'm like wait something's wrong <laughs> it shouldn't be this comfortable and this easy <laughs> I think we all get that as well it's like sometimes even I've, I've spoken to people who've done a perfect set of nails or um and it's just like okay what what's going to happen now no they are just perfect they are the best that I can achieve best that I can do and you just need to take that pride and just be like yeah let's roll with it and on to the next thing and where can I go from here yeah yeah you, you can get sucked into like a little rabbit hole of making something too perfect mm -hmm. and then that's when you just it just starts to fall apart because you're just like oh wait what if I, if I fix this piece and fix this piece and then it's never ending so sometimes you just want to like let it be and be like no this is perfect this is fine this is great <laughs> exactly and I think for um you've your collaborations with now stylist so far if we we drop a few names that our audience might know obviously Meta Francis you worked with um on the two scratch magazine front covers mm -hmm. who else have you worked with um so I've mainly worked with US artists so uh, Mel Shingaris she's actually a Brit yeah. um she's a celebrity nail stylist I don't know if you guys know of her but um work with her over here uh Jolene Broder she's awesome she's another a celebrity nail technician as well um there has been Sheila Manaus as well she's really lovely she's obviously um here as well um those are the three main ones that I've been working with because once I find someone I kind of just stick with like who I know and, and who I like to work with it's not necessarily just about how good they are but it's like can I work with you on set can you handle um set life and and the pressures that come with that and demanding clients and clients changing their minds last minute and going actually no we want something else and it's mm. like mm, that kind of is going to take a while for them to redo like a whole new set of nails but okay <laughs> <laughs> smiles on the face and keep calm and carry on that kind of yeah thing, really. literally but, yeah oh, it's, it's amazing to hear that you work with so many people i think um have you noticed throughout your career that there's been a little bit of a change in the way that brands see nails in photo shoots and kind of demand nail styling have there been any kind of changes that you've noticed um, 
I feel like it is, it's changing, but it's changing slowly. So um, even with my client two weeks ago, um, they had to find extra room in the budget for me to bring a nail tech on. Because I'm like, okay, we've got hand models in this shop. Uh, we need a nail tech. And also they didn't really think about nail art. And I was just like, let's get some nail art on there because it's it's a fun brand, it's a fun shoe. It's like their North American launch. So let, like, let's give them like everything that um, they deserve. Mm -hmm. And so brands are, um, they're a bit slow, but they're getting there and they, they do start to understand the importance of like nail art and nail techs and, and not having the makeup artist do nails, which always stresses me out. They're like, oh, well, just bring some nail polish and the makeup artist can do it. I'm like, that's not their job. Like we actually have a dedicated person that is very good at it. Cause it's not just about painting nails. It's about making sure the cuticles are nice and that all the nails are the right shape and the right length and um, making sure they just look as pristine as they can. Yeah, and that makes your job easier, I guess, at the end or, or when it comes to any retouches that need to be done. If you've got the nail, I presume, you know, as perfect as it can be by a professional, then hopefully it makes things a little bit easier when it comes uh, to post-production. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, because post-production, um, it does take a long time, especially when you're shooting beauty, like trying to get all the skin looking nice and flawless and glowing and everything else. And then if if there's some, if like a makeup artist has just done just wax and polish on and then they they've got like uh, polish on the edges and it's spilled over it, it's it's time that the retoucher doesn't really want to be spending on doing that it's like try and get it right in camera first and then uh everything works out so yeah and you've um worked with quite a few nail brands um to date haven't you and and done quite a few sort of nail shoots what tips would you give um to anyone watching this that say um just a wants to improve their instagram um feed and take better photos of their client nails or b perhaps wants to enter a competition like the great scratch shootout which closes this friday by the way for anybody watching um <laughs> get involved and shoot a great set of nail pictures what advice would you give people and um, what should they look for when they're taking a great photo of nails um, I would say um, make the nails kind of like um, the forefront of the picture, but in a less obvious way. So like so many times I see pictures where you've literally got like hands like this. And it's like, if it's not comfortable for the model to do that, don't let her do it. Like let the model kind of feel into the photo shoot, maybe give give the model like a character or a theme that I find helps. And the more lifestyle-y looking it can be, I feel like um, they tend to be the better, better photographs. Um, but if you are posing, make them purposeful posing. Mm -hmm. So like, if you're gonna do something, so I, I had a uh, image that was um, put into different variations of Cosmopolitan and the model, um, I, I can't do it because I'm not a model. So I feel a bit weird, like showing you guys how to do it. But she had her hands on her face and they were like crossing her eyes so it was like a v-shape and it was like very kind of hands-on face but it looked so good because mm -hmm. that was like she's a model so that, that was, that's what she's good at she's good at posing with her herself and her hands and her expression and everything else so um i would say just have fun on shoots and kind of feel out what looks good and um sometimes it, it can take a while for both the photographer and the, and the model to warm up but once you get going with some music and some jokes and whatever else then um then yeah but if you're if you're just working with um a hand model then get some props involved for sure like definitely not just the standard kind of holding the nail polish which is which are great images and it, it does show off the nail art and it does show off the colors and everything else but if you can like set some props up on a table and have like a model's hand reaching it to, to pick something up or um to like move something around on the table that those are always really good shots as well yeah that's some great advice actually so i we've we've um been tagged in a lot of photos recently of people um in the garden with their nails and yeah. sort of within the grass and with the flowers and um they, they've looked really different and really beautiful as opposed to um a lot of the nail images which are the hands over each other or yeah know, with, with a standard prop like like the nail polish like you said and you yeah. know there's nothing against those but i guess it's nice to everyone's insta feeds are so competitive these days and if, if a nail tech's doing 
X amount of nail sets a day. It's nice to kind of mix it up and, you know, try yeah. something new. Yeah, my favourite is always holding a glass of Prosecco. It's like, I mean, that's my favourite, with or without my nails done. <laughs> but that's just how we roll. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, when it yeah. comes to lighting, what are your top tips? Because that's quite a difficult one to master, especially in some salons, you know, um, when it comes to shadowing and things like that. What, what's your advice there? Um, so lighting, I would say, again, have so much fun with it. Like you can get so creative with just the little things that you find around the salon, around the home. Like I've got a desk lamp, um, which has like different color temperatures. Um, and it's quite a bright light, bright lamp. Um, and I like my lighting punchy. I, I like shadows and I like it looking like bright and airy. Um, but even if you don't have lighting, like natural outdoor sunlight is obviously the best resource because it's always in the right position um when it's high when it's high up in the sky or if you've got a light that's quite high up it creates like a nice shadow that like can be quite creative over the uh, over your shot um but yeah i would just say see like look around and see what you have like don't go spend like lots of money on lighting when uh you you don't when you don't need to really you, you could get away with just like one or two lights and and even um if you're taking photos on a, on an iphone there are some great little add-ons that i've seen on the internet where you can just whack like a light onto your phone and it creates a nice even light if that's the look you're going for as well and if you find that um uh light your lighting is a bit too harsh you can get like grease proof paper or tracing paper and it will just soften off the light and make it not as bright so if you've got like a really harsh lamp with a bright bulb mm -hmm. just clip some tracing paper over the front of it not on the bulb because it will catch on fire please don't do that <laughs> um but like just in front of it just to shield some of the light will, will create really nice lighting that's a really handy trick thank you for that take note everybody when uh, when it comes to snapping uh, your your nail fees there so um when you've worked with your nail stylists in the past what happens in terms of the concept of the um photo shoot do you work very much together or is it one person more than the other how, how does it all come together um well each shoot is very different um but i like to I like to let the nail tech and the makeup artist kind of talk it out first before I start putting in ideas because sometimes what I think is a great idea might not necessarily work mm -hmm. and then sometimes the either the nail tech or the makeup artist will be like oh what about this and so um, I get really excited when I'm like oh my god yeah I love that idea so on uh, I think it was the um, was it the first yeah the, the 2018 uh, cover that I did with Met so um, Bethany was the makeup artist and she was uh, speaking with Metz about her ideas for the nails and so Metz came up with this like triangular uh, pattern and then Bethany was just like oh why why don't I add like a little triangle under the eye like really simple and I was just like I'm done like this is you, you guys are just making my dreams come true <laughs> and she had like similar colors and stuff and so we made it all kind of fit in together but it's a it's a lovely collaboration when you can just sit and talk and hash out some ideas and we always come with our little mood boards um i've got stacks and stacks of mood boards on my computer i'm just like oh i really want to do a shoot like this one day and i want to do another shoot like this and so i'm always going through my mood boards and going and showing and collecting pictures like i've got way more photographs on my phone and on my computer than I really need to be having but um it's great to kind of just kind of get them together in, in like a little scrapbook and ones that you can just reference for any shoot you just pull it up like oh I see I saw this like three seasons ago but let's try and bring it back and let's try and like revamp it or do something a bit different and tweak it so Oh, that sounds great. It sounds that there's so many things that can pull together on a shoot. And the, the sense that I'm feeling is that you should just be very relaxed about it, you know, um, let everyone have their creative input, because then you're going to come up with a winning final product, because, uh, you know, everyone seems to have their, their great ideas. And when you pull them all together, it sounds like, you know, the perfect combo. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It really is. And yeah. um You've had quite a keen interest in nails for a while, I guess. I was, um, when we've been talking before, you said that you used to have a, a huge nail polish collection. You've always got your nails done. <laughs> and that's now led to another kind of project. You've taken that interest a little bit further as, alongside your photography, haven't you? you yeah. So, um, oh, God. Okay. I know the girls are in the chat and they're just going <laughs> to like crack up laughing at, at the story. So... 
I was at um, one of the beauty conventions with my mum. Like, look, she was like looking for like salon bits and pieces. And the week before the convention, I bought maybe I don't know three or four nail polish colors. And then, so I must have put on my Facebook, "Oh, I'm at so and so, and I've just bought another five nail polishes. Someone help come and rescue me." <laughs> and then, um, uh, so I used to live with LJ, who is also in the chat, and she would just go into my bathroom and go like what's going on here? Like, you've got way too many nail polishes. They're all the same colour. I'm like, they're not the same colour. They're all different. It's the same colour. Yeah. All different. They're all different. They're all different shades of red, pink and coral. Though Those are kind of like my go-to colours. Um, and so um, B and LJ were on my Facebook feed going, oh, we could start a pop-up shop just from your bathroom. And, and I'm like, hands off my nail polish. No one touches my nail polish. Um, <laughs> And then from there, we were like, hold on a minute. Um, there's a possibility we could do something with this. And so we took the conversation off Facebook and we started a subscription box and it's called Mebox. Um, so it's M-E-E-B-O-X. Um, and we launch a new theme every month and we ship nail polishes um, according to that theme. Um, so no one knows what they're getting. It's always a surprise mm -hmm. and we have the most fun doing it. And it literally just came from, it just was, it just happened organically. Like, can we really do this? What do we need? And we were like, well, we need products. Mm -hmm. We need some design and LJ is a great graphic designer. So she designed all our logos and everything else. And then B, she's really great at like PR and promotion and like talking about it. And then, uh, I'm 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 the mug who is the one that has to go to all the nail polish brands and beg them for nail polish. Be like, do you want to be in our box this month? Um, which is it is fun now. At, at the time, I was like, I didn't sign up for this. I just signed up for some free nail polish. Like, what are you doing? And the other two were like, Yeah, but like, you you've got experience running the hair salon and like. I was just like, yeah, but I still don't know how to talk to brands. Um, but it morphed into our our little individual roles and now we're like really good at them and uh if someone can't do something then the other person jumps in like we work together as like a little tripod and we all kind of help each other out and experience each other's roles and um there was one time i was on a shoot and so i was struggling to get in, in touch with one of our suppliers and i was just like guys um i'm really struggling here can you contact can you call them and like negotiate what uh, we're gonna have for this month's box and they were like sending me messages while i was on the shoot and then uh, I saw one message and I was just like, oh my God, no, they, uh, they, they were, I think they were bidding too high for it. And we, we couldn't, there's only so much we can afford to put, um, to buy stock for, for the boxes and stuff. And, and then they came off, when I came off the shoot, they were like, on oh, that, like, I don't like doing your job. Like, how do you do it? And I just like, it's not so bad. Like we build, we build, um, I, I've built my confidence over the time and yeah. it's about building relationships. And so we've got some of our um, favorite brands and stuff that we go to. And then, but I'm always wanting to reach out to new brands. We have lots of different brands in our box. It's not just one brand of nail polish. We like, like, get the indies involved get the big brands involved yeah. um we put like lots of treatments and tools and you know just make it fun for everyone and we absolutely love when everyone starts tagging us and we're just like oh my god how did you do that from just these polishes that were in this little box of ours but like, it just it just shows how much you know nail polish and nail color and nail style can really bring joy to people and i think that's the aim of the game in in our connecting industries isn't it really that it just you know a little bit of color goes and a little bit of care goes a very very long way such a long way and there's there's so and there's so many variations of what can be done with just the two or three colors that we we provide with like all the other tools and, and everything else and yeah i'm still blown away i'm just like and there's me like trying to like copy what um, some of our ambassadors are doing i'm like i don't i can't do this and then <laughs> i'm just like it's too hard <laughs> <laughs> oh no it sounds like a great project so um i think a lot of people can see in the comments but um follow me box uk if you haven't already for more information on that so just to wrap up i'm guessing uh, well i want to ask what is the the weirdest nail or beauty shoot you've ever worked on have people been holding something weird or has something odd happened have you had any strange or abnormal ones or something go um, wrong because stuff does go wrong yeah stuff goes wrong a lot of the time <laughs> it's about just keeping your core cool. um 
we um i was on a shoot and i think netta will will uh remember this um and the model was absolutely lovely but she just kept falling asleep and i was just like oh i love you i know you're tired but and like metz is there trying to like get in and do her nails and she's just like asleep on the table bless her heart like i don't know if she's had a hard week or whatever and i was just like um please just like try and like pay attention and stay awake and stuff. I mean, we ended up with a great shoot um but yeah that's that's one that comes to comes to mind um on the whole it's generally because i'm so relaxed and i'm just like oh okay well that's happened never mind we'll just we'll figure it out and don't panic we'll just get it done and um yeah i can't, I can't think of anything else sorry and my yeah, mind's gone no, that, like, that's great it's always good to know sort of what quirks can happen because yeah you know, not everything is always plain sailing and it's all about adapting and that's whether you're a nail technician in the salon or whether you're you know on a photo shoot or you know in yeah. your day to day so now that's really good to know and we've had some amazing tips um from you so thank you so much for that um, and it's been really it's been really interesting and we'll definitely be taking this on board i think as a scratch team as well when yeah. we're shooting some of our photos too but um i just want to say if anyone is watching use those tips enter the great scratch shootout which uh, closes this friday uh, more information on that can be found on our website scratchmagazine.co.uk it's we've changed the theme up slightly this year just because of covid and lockdown we're asking people instead of collaborating because that hasn't really been feasible this year um we're asking people to express their own personality or their selves through a nail picture or a picture of themselves with their nails so you know have you got any top tips for i know you touched on kind of um hands around the face but have you got any final words of wisdom for you know hand and face shots um i would uh say just have have fun with it um play around with where you can find light in your home um so it doesn't just have to be you don't have to have a, a fantastic setup you can just set your camera like on a bookshelf against some books and then you're standing by a window or like you're you're having a, a cup of tea on the sofa like it could be anything fun if you just play around with what's at home you'll be surprised at how many shoots you can actually do just in in the comfort of your own home so um i was i would say that and just play around with where you put the camera like how high up you do how low you do like where your hands are you could just be thinking like lots of things yeah Oh, that sounds great. Some amazing tips there. Thank you so much. I've expected loads of selfies to come through now from our followers. So uh, thank you. So it's been really, really valuable advice. And uh, thank you so much for joining us today. It's oh, no, thank you so much for having me. It was such a pleasure. And I hope everyone gets good tips and stuff. <laughs> yeah, some amazing tips. And um, we'll be publishing uh, more tips from Natalie in um, an upcoming issue of Scratch Magazine, as well as online this week as well so just to summarize everything we've spoken about today which is exciting so thank you again hopeful for another scratch cover um in the not too distant future as well which will be amazing because uh, <laughs> yeah whenever we get one of your images come through they're also, also striking and beautiful so thank you very much for for those oh you're um, welcome <laughs> and uh, all the best over in la i know it's morning time over there so enjoy the rest of your day Thank and um, everyone give give Natalie a follow on photo Natalie is your Instagram is that correct it is yeah brilliant well thank you so much and uh, we will catch up with you soon all right thank you again bye, bye.